Welcome back to the Eagle Sports Coaches Show. We're here from Johnson Arena. Tom Hodges has joined us now. And, Coach, uh, we kind of moved the show. We we knew you liked the basketball floor here much better than the Lynn Miller room. Well, the friendly confines of the Lynn Miller studio. Okay. Sorry. Studio we've moved out on to my natural habitat, which is Johnson Arena and the, the basketball floor out here. It's great to be here, Jay. Thank you for having us on. And uh, Okay, you can't say gosh almighty while we're doing the show since you're here. This is about the normal Got area. to mighty blues and a, <laughs> and a thunderation or two, but uh, we'll, we'll let that digress and, and start talking basketball. Illinois State Friday night, the Eagles uh, went on the road in the first round of the preseason WNIT. Uh, with your young group, uh, played pretty well at times, uh, even though Illinois State, a, a much older team, uh, right. but uh, still came away with some good points. Well, I think you're exactly right, Jay. We represented ourselves really well in a tough environment against a really good basketball club. Illinois State is just a perennial uh, postseason contender, uh, whether it be in the NCAA tournament or the NIT. Uh, in the postseason, so to go in there and compete against a top-notch Missouri Valley team and uh, really give ourselves a chance to to win the game and give ourselves some success was big for our young bunch. And as we learn and, and try to start figuring this thing out, you know, it was one of those situations where you could see uh, some of your younger players, your true freshmen. Uh, you know, it might have been the most true freshman to ever play a game at Moorhead State because you got everyone in action, right. and they were a lot of players seeing their first time in a collegiate game. Well, Kylie Howe is is uh, going to be a special player here. And like what I've said before, I, we've just got to temper her expectations so we don't put a put a burden of a team onto a freshman's back. We don't need to do that. But uh, she is she is certainly – talented enough and good enough, works hard enough, and, and has the character to get on the floor and earn the starting nod. Uh, so I'm really excited about Kylie, uh, really excited about our sophomores. I thought our sophomores performed better than they performed all year last year, you know, and that's as they should. That maturation is there. So really exciting. We lost the game. Never want to be uh, satisfied with dropping a contest, but as long as we're getting better and we're learning because of it, and, and we certainly did that through film study, uh, then, then it's a positive and we can move forward. You know, each time you step out on the floor, you never know really what you're going to get, especially with the young ones. And as we talked about, it was a very uh, hostile place to play. They had a good crowd, uh, even though they wasn't playing at their home arena. No, we were playing right down the road because of the scheduling conflict, which probably uh, suited them better because it was the equivalent of like a round county gymnasium, a, a high school gymnasium, but they have a great following. It felt like they were right on top of you, as hot as blue blazes in there. Uh, so it made for a really hostile environment than really their 12, 13,000 seat cavernous arena uh, would have been. Uh, so, so really it kind of worked to their advantage not playing on their floor. Well, you uh, come back home, which is a good thing. The yes. fact that the WNIT awarded a consolation round here at Johnson Arena and that could uh, you know could help the situation because we are so young wasn't going to try to wasn't going to have a regular a regular home game to December 1st now you get a chance to play two on your home floor it, it's huge for us Jay and I, I have to thank uh, Brian Hutchison Dr. Wayne Andrews uh, for stepping up and and that's a total bid process basically whoever steps up and says they want it uh, they can bid it out, and we we bid it out, and Brian uh, got behind the thing and, and was able to, to secure the consolation rounds for us. Uh, really excited. It's going to be a crazy week of Eagle Athletics and Eagle uh, uh, Athletic Weekend for sure. If you're an Eagle fan, it's the, it is the time of year for you because you can get out and see just about a little bit of everything this weekend here in Moorhead. Yeah, the NIT games will be Saturday. 5.30 and 7.30, Moorhead State taking on Kennesaw State. What have you found out about Kennesaw State? They play Georgia Tech tonight. They do. Uh, they're much like us uh, in that uh, they have a first-year head coach. Um, she's, she has come in. She has a very successful stint at Toledo as an assistant. Uh, so I can really sympathize with what she's going through right now. Uh, they played a really good Middle Tennessee State team in the first round of the NIT. They play a really good Georgia Tech team tonight. Uh, so they're a young team. Uh, 
Uh, they, they showed some really good signs against Middle Tennessee. They shoot the three really well. They had a young lady go five for seven from behind the three. Uh, against against a really probably a top 25 middle team, so uh, we'll have our hands cut out for uh, work cut out for us and our hands full um, with a with a pretty athletic young youthful bunch most likely looking to come in here and get their first win. Of course, we want to tell people once again MSU Kennesaw State at 5:30 Saturday after the football game at Jane Stadium. Come on down and watch a doubleheader because Davidson Northern Illinois will play the second game, and of course. Uh, Want to tell people, I'm trying to read this for the first time. I shouldn't read this before we went on. All women's games will feature general mission seating right. for $5 a day. And then on Sunday, the men play at 2, we'll play at 5, and then the second game will play at 7. Tickets for the men's game Sunday are the normal single game prices, $13 for reserve chair backs, 11 for general mission, and 8 for general mission bleachers. And then the fans are encouraged to stay after yes. the – the men's game for both the women's game, and they only have to purchase one ticket one for ticket. Sunday. So, and of course, you can go to msueagles.com or call the ticket office at 606 783 2386 or 606 783 2088. Right. So, you know, they're making it very affordable for people, very accessible. And again, hats off to Brian and his staff for doing that. I think they've also mailed out. Uh, some sort of voucher or ticket if you're a season ticket holder. So uh, we need to absolutely make this a, I know Coach Woods has just really been harping on make it a home court advantage, something that's never been an issue. Uh, we need to make it even more so this year and get behind both basketball teams. Uh, I'll stress again, Saturday, go to the football game, go to senior day, come support this young bunch that we've got uh, that's gonna play their guts out. Then we go watch Jamie Gordon win a, win a championship and then come back on Sunday and let's do it all over again. Yeah, make it a, an Eagle Championship Day on uh, on Saturday, as you said. Of course, uh, we'd like to remind people, and we'll get back in basketball in just a second. Of course, Thursday, the men will play Alice Lloyd here at 7 o'clock, 6.45 airtime on the ESN. Also, that's the quarterfinals of the OVC Volleyball Tournament. Moorhead State will take on UT Martin at 7 o'clock. Then hopefully on the semifinal night at Friday at 7 o'clock, the OVC Tournament will have Moorhead State in that. Valparaiso football on Saturday <laughs> afternoon at 1 o'clock. Airtime 12.30 here on the ESN. And then 5.30 will be the women's game against Kennesaw State. 5.15 airtime on the ESN. And, of course, uh, the second game of that will be Davidson in Northern Illinois. And then coming up on Sunday, Lafayette, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sean Woods Club will play at 2 o'clock. And then we'll play either Davidson or Northern Illinois coming up at 5 o'clock. We play at 5 o'clock no matter what on Sunday. Regardless, one of the one of the privileges of hosting, we got to set our own game times. You're going to earn your paycheck this weekend, Jay. I think so. Uh, I get my dollar and a half. I tell you're right. <laughs> and if anybody out there wants to uh, uh, wash jerseys or uh, <laughs> learn how to be a ball boy or ball girl, we're going to need all hands on deck here Might in Moorhead. help keep stats if they come. Right, or coach. Yeah. I mean, hey, come help coach. <laughs> they uh, do that anyway. I hear them on the uh, Right, we need all the help we can get. So, but, uh, you know, we talked about uh, the, the great schedule you have. And, you know, first time a WNIT game is going to be played here at Johnson Arena. I mean, 43rd year of women's basketball, 499 wins. Could get our 500th win in the WNIT. Yeah, it's pretty special, you know, and, and we're still looking for that elusive postseason. But, you know, it's one of those things. Maybe we get used to playing in the preseason that it, it precedes a postseason bid. But uh, really excited. You know, the, I, I keep saying all roads lead to good things for this team. Uh, the early returns are good. We had a great practice this morning, maybe our best practice this morning, Jay. Uh, the energy, the effort, the enthusiasm, the intensity, it's getting where it needs to be on a consistent basis. And if we get that, uh, then, then winning and, and all the all the accolades will, will take care of themselves. You mentioned the film process, and that seems like so important to younger players where you could slow it down maybe a little bit for them, show them maybe what they did wrong or how they did something <laughs> and be able to show them the correct way. It's amazing that uh, players will tell you one thing and then you can show them another <laughs> thing that is in fact them, that is their, their actual person uh, uh, or persona on tape, and, and sometimes those things don't match up. So uh, the, the old adage of the film doesn't lie uh, is good. We use it as a constructive tool. Uh, again, we have, uh, we have some great, great tools that we get to use, and, and we spend a lot of time on film. We, we watch practice. We watch our 
games and just working on those little tweaks. And our this bunch has really embraced that, and they enjoy watching and learning from those film sessions more than any bunch we've had here. Tell you what the difference is that I saw in one game is the fact you have more players that can take it to the hoop this year. It seems like they're more comfortable taking it. Now, the shots didn't fall the other day, but right. they're going to fall in a game, and you know that and I know that, the, the odds of uh, – but also, I mean, they can – Take it off the drive now, and you know. And before we've seen, we've been kind of limited. I mean, we had China sure. that could do it, and uh, last year, you know, limited. And then maybe Linda and Courtney mm -hmm. could do it, but you know, you have some perimeter players that can that can really put it on the floor and take it to the hoop. We have to find that correct balance of driving the basketball and shooting the basketball. It's it's that it's that balance that we have to find every game. Optimally, we'd like to shoot 20 to 24 threes a game. Shot 19 the other day, or six for 19. You look at probably the last three attempts that we have were the most open, the yeah. best shots that we got. So, uh, you know, as far as the shot selection, usually with young teams that's an issue. Right now it's not for us. So we're driving the ball well. We got to get to the foul line more, uh, which will come with driving the basketball. And then, then when we get an open shot, we got to knock it down. So I really like the the mindset this team is is starting to to take take form. I know that you've uh, defensively going to play the the Tyndall matchup zone, as right. we call it. Uh, are they progressing well in that? Well, I'll ask you what did what did you think the other night? I haven't watched Donnie. I, I I like I like our progression with it. I thought our pressure was was better the other night. Uh, it's a work in progress, but uh, there there's some good things good things coming. What do you think? The big the big part of that is the fact that you have to know your assignment. And, <laughs> yeah, and, you, and, you need to know that. And, and the fact that you know, I think second half to start, we got into a, right. a, a situation where we had some younger players on that bottom line, right. which enabled them to have their older older players go to the corner and right. a little lefty hit three uh, and yeah. roll on it. Simple bump. Yeah. We covered it well in the first half. They didn't change. They didn't do anything different. It was a simple bump to the corner, and they picked on Kylie, yeah. uh, which is smart. Yeah. It's a smart. It was a smart coaching move on their part. So uh, that came out on film, <laughs> and, and that's we're going to see that. So it, this is unlike anything they've ever played against in that. This stuff. I mean, there's good coaches, yeah. so they're gonna they're gonna find they're gonna know that you're a freshman and you might be a little uneasy. So you have to prepare yourself accordingly. Uh, Kylie responded well and uh, really really uh, took took it as a as a challenge to to be prepared to be challenged. I also like the fact that uh, the fact that uh, your bigs. Uh, a little more physical, I think they were right. last year. I think they they didn't take as much down low and might not have the numbers yet, but uh, Ryan's and Arledge uh, mm -hmm. went to war down low. Well, and I have to give great credit right now to uh, a group of guys that are coming in and practicing. The NCAA allows us to have male practice players, and that's something I, I've never done, Jay, but we felt like we needed to be more physical, uh, and and we we wanted to go out and – uh, through our compliance office, we got a group of about three or four guys to come in, and they've really uh, just we've seen a seen a much more physical Casey and much more physical McKenzie, and that's what we're going to have to have, especially in this non-conference. Yeah. You know, again, in this non-conference, it is it is going to be uh, we're going to be outsized and and overmatched every game that we play. So it, it's made us a lot better. So big thanks to Dusty Nichols, Aaron Lee. Uh, Jared, Daniel, I mean, they've just really made us better. WNIT here at Johnson Arena coming up on Saturday, 530. Moorhead State taking on Kennesaw State and then Davidson and Northern Illinois follow at 730. Moorhead State will play at 5 o'clock on Sunday as well after the men's game at 2 o'clock. As Tom said, if you're a season ticket holder, you've received a ticket or a voucher in the mail for Saturday's game. Sunday's game, you can come for the 2 o'clock men's game, pay one price, see three games. You can't beat that price. It's a deal at twice the price. That's true. You'll be selling popcorn at halftime, won't you? I will, absolutely. Uh, come watch Coach Woods Bunch uh, for sure. Come watch on Thursday night. Let's all come out and support them uh, and, and make this a big, big, big Eagle weekend. Tom, always a pleasure. Jay, thank you. All right, we'll uh, talk to you uh, before the game on Saturday. That's going to do it for this edition of the Eagle Sports Coaches Show. Once again, OVC Volleyball Tournament Thursday, Friday, Saturday at uh, Weatherby Gym. The men will play Alice Lloyd on Thursday night. The football taking on Valparaiso on Saturday afternoon. 
Kennesaw State taking on the women on Saturday uh, evening at 5.30, and then Morehead State's women will play either Davidson or Northern Illinois Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock, right after the men take on Lafayette of Pennsylvania at 2 o'clock. So if you're an Eagle fan, go to msueagles.com. You can find out more about each game, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Eagle Sports Coaches Show. For everyone involved, I'm Jason Blanton. Until next time, so long, everybody.